My name is Moses Swawero. Naitwa Moses Swawero. I love the Lord. Nampenda Bwana. He has been a good God to me. Amekuwa Mungu mwema kwangu. I love him because of the grace that he has shared or given unto me. Nampenda kwa sababu ya neema aliyonipatia. I'm a father of two. Baba wa watoto wawili. And I'm so happy. Na ninafurahia sana. For what God has been to me. Mungu amekuwa nini kwangu? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we come to the house of the Lord. Unapokuja kwa nyumba ya Bwana. I know we have the theme of the year. Najua tuko na mwanga wa mwaka huu. And it tells us that the year of threshing mountains. Na ni mwaka wa kuweza kuharibu milima. And I know we have the scripture that guides us on that uh, theme this year. Na maandiko ambayo tuko nayo ya kutuongoza katika uh, mada hii mwaka huu. And we want to read uh, Isaiah 41. Nikiweza tu kusoma za kusoma Isaia 41 and verse 14 up to verse 16 hadi 16 and the bible says inasema, fear not you warm jacob you men of israel i will help you i pray that we can read together this verse so that it can sink in our hearts even as we continue in this uh, discussion this morning let's read together One, two, three. fear not, fear not. You warm Jacob. Maybe instead of Jacob we can say you small or warm and put your name. You warm Moses. So let's read again. Fear not. You warm Moses. You men of Israel I will help you. Says the Lord and your redeemer the holy one of Israel. Verse 15. Behold I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hill like a chaff. Verse 16. You shall winnow them. The wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the Lord and the glory in the world of Israel. Hallelujah. Every time we come to the themes of the year wakati mwingi tunaporejelea mada ama mwongozo wa mwaka maybe what comes to mind kile kinachokuja katika akili is that this is the church theme ya kwamba hii ni mwelekeo wa kanisa but i want to submit to us this morning lakini ningependa kutuambia that this word has been in the bible all this long ya kwamba neno hili limekuwa katika biblia miaka hiyo yote because the bible was not written this year kwa sababu biblia haikuandikwa mwaka huu the verse huu. 14 up to whatever number was not included this year haikuongezewa mwaka huu but this portion of scripture has been there all along lakini andiko hili limekuepo kila mara but what is important for us this morning lakini ni nini is to know that the Lord speaks in seasons. That the Lord will not speak once. He keeps on speaking to his people through maybe a prophet because we have prophet that the Lord has put in our midst. And the purpose of them speaking to us just like I was be speaking to you this morning is to help you know what the Lord is saying this morning to you and to me. And therefore this portion of scripture is not new. You may have read it many other times. But for this year this is our clarion call. That the Lord is saying oh young Jacob or retro warm Jacob that I will help you. And why is the Lord intending to help us? Because it's possible we may have been struggling. It is possible that we have issues that we cannot solve. It is possible we have limitation. Because in saying that God will help us, he's also speaking to us about a mountain. Saying that before us there is a mountain. Just as it was with the children of Israel. When they were needed to cross over to the land that the Lord was giving them. 
Before them was a red sea. That, mm-hmm. The Lord wanted to help them cross over. But when they stood at that point in time, it was not possible to think of how they would cross over. They even cried to Moses and told him would rather go back where we are coming from. We have eaten everything that we wanted. We had enough meat. Why are you bringing us into this place that we can be destroyed? But the word of God tells us at that point in time that God spoke to Moses and he tells them, Joshua tells, telling them, fear not for I am with you and the Egyptians that are pursuing you though there is a mountain of a Red Sea before you I, the Lord, will help you. This Egyptian you see today, you will see them no more. Maybe you may say that time, what was approaching them, or the challenges that were before them, it was behind them. It was possible they could run ahead or whatever else. But what was bigger before them and why they were afraid, it's because there was the Red Sea which was a mountain before them. But when I think thought of this coming to speak here, I thought it is important for us to try and clarify. And how we want to clarify is to us to ask ourselves what are the characteristics of a mountain? What are the characteristics of a mountain if there is one that is stands before you. When a mountain is a natural mode of earth created or created by a fault. Uh-huh. Another characteristic of a mountain is a very steep rise in the landscape that is often abrupt in comparison to its surrounding. And mountains are said also to have a minimum height of 200,000 feet. Another thing about mountains is that as a mountain is a steep slope and defined summit or peak. At the same time, mountains also have names. And, and therefore meaning that anything that stands before you or just elevated ahead of you, it has a characteristic of a mountain. Maybe it's like a hill. Maybe it's something that you cannot measure its height. Maybe something that is, has a peak and you don't know how to go up. Sometimes you may not even know the name of the mountain that stands before you. But more often, and we have been told from this pulpit, if there are mountains, then anything that you can see it has a name and if they have a name then they also hear and therefore we can come to this mountain that maybe you would want to break it down and bring it closer to yourself and you say my mountain is all it's not all that you are speaking about my mountain is because I don't have certain qualifications maybe I have been looking for this job but I don't measure up to be able to get that job to some of us maybe mountains is because you have financial luck to others it's because you have been written off by your peers to some of us it's because there are things that are hindering you even from knowing where you are going but the beauty 
mountain of everything is if you identify your mountain you are in a position to start overcoming it. If you don't know that you have a mountain then it's not possible for any one of us to help. And therefore in summary a mountain will be termed anything that is limiting your sight or progress anything that is limiting seeing ahead or when you look at your future you cannot figure what your future will be like or when you think of your family you cannot know where you are going or when you are seated here you don't know what you will do tomorrow then that can be called a mountain that stands before you but what the Lord wants us to know that though these are bad news to all of us because before the mountain we are just like a worm we are not in any position to be able to go up the mountain the Lord is a God who lifts his people the Lord is the Lord who glazes standards it is possible you may not have anything but the Lord is a lifter of men I remember some years back and maybe the whole of my life I have been able to work in different places but the many places I've ever worked I have never been asked to produce a CV neither have I been able asked to bring my papers school papers it was later after I had finished working that I went back to school to collect my papers. This is to say that the Lord does not move because of what is in your hands. The Lord is looking at what is in your hand which is not out of your own qualification. I remember when I finished Form 4 I met my pat the CU patron where I was the CU chairman and I remember the words he spoke to me he told me that the Lord is going to use the stuff that is in your hand the Lord is going to use the road that God has given you to make ways for you and so as we stand in this place this morning I have come to tell you that the Lord is sending help for you and the help that God wants to send it to you it is not because of your own qualification but because the Lord wants to position you in a way that he can come into your life hallelujah tell someone the Lord wants to help you the Lord is sending help your way but even as the Lord sends help before you the word of God keeps reminding us that from the time of John the Baptist that the kingdom of God suffered violence and only the violence that shall take it by force what am I trying to say I'm saying when you know that you are where you are where you know your limitations when you know you don't have what it takes then only one thing that can help you when the Bible tells us that the Lord is making us into new shredding tools when he says he's going to give us teeth when he's going, he says he's going to make us to thresh mountains he's not just saying that so that we can go back home and sleep but he's inviting us into his army so that we can together with him say the Lord this mountain just like Joshua 
Joshua said that now I'm 80 years but there is that which the Lord had promised me and it's time for me now I need that mountain I need to claim that mountain Hallelujah Tell someone, praise the Lord. The Lord is giving you help. The Lord wants to sharpen you. The Lord wants to make you to be the tool. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not the church. It is not the past that one will be made sharp for you. It's you, the Lord, that wants to work with. So that you can move and do that which the Lord wants you to do. I thought of a mountain. And by God's grace, I have been able to go over mountains. Not just my own mountains, but even physical mountains. One time, by the grace of God, I was going to Tanzania. And when we approached Mount Kilimanjaro, we are told it's one of the highest mountains. But we are there, we were able to look down at Mount Kilimanjaro. And from that viewpoint, maybe I could talk about it from where Pastor Millicent spoke to us last Sunday. Who are you, Mount Kilimanjaro? Before a plane that can soar above you. Because at that point in time, when you are above that mountain, then that mountain looks smaller. And if you compare to yourself to anything below the mountain, then you look like a worm. But the Lord is saying that even though the mountain may look too high. The Lord can lift up a standard. Just he can lift up, you can be lifted up by a plane. And so above a mountain. That you can look up below, the, below yourselves. And ask where are you mountain? Who are you mountain? Because the Lord has lifted up a standard before you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This was the same story of Gideon. Gideon, he knew that the Israelites had been attacked. And for many days, Gideon was so afraid. Just like you could be afraid this morning. Not knowing what to do next. But Gideon in that threshing floor, then the Lord speaks to him. And he says, mighty man of valor, what are you doing? here. You ought not to be here. But he says you know our enemies, the Midians, are seeking to destroy us. It is possible this morning that as I speak to you, you could be hiding somewhere. You have no courage to face tomorrow. But I want to speak to you and tell you, mighty man of valor, why are you hiding? Yeah, the Lord is calling us out. The Lord is calling us out that he can help you. When you think of yourself as a war, that is the worst that you could have. That could be the bad news that could have come to your life. But there is also good news. But the good news is what the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. From verse 3, the Bible says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. Next. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. What are they for? For pulling down strong. Uh -huh. For pulling down what the Lord is saying that God, though you will be in the situation you are in, and though you walk in flesh, 
Where you need to pinch yourself and say things are bad. Where you need to imagine yourself in the situation that you are in. The Bible is telling us that though we walk in the flesh. Humanly. In our circumstances. When we feel lack. When we feel want, the Bible is telling us, but we do not war. We do not wage our battles, even as with those that have carnal weapons. Because the good thing is that the Lord has given us weapons. And the weapons that God has given us, and he says they are mighty through him. And they are mighty through him so that we can pull down all strongholds. When the word pulling down is used, it is symbolizes there is something that is above you. There is something that is exalted above you. And so the Lord is saying that he has given us weapon to pull down every stronghold that stands before you. That we can also cast it down every imagination. And when it talks also to us about imagination, is to say that many of the things that are troubling us is because they are imagination. Tell someone you are imagining too much. Tell someone you are imagining too much. Because you may be imagining how you are hated. You may be imagining that you are the only person left. And you remember the Bible telling us of a prophet of God. And at one point he is hiding before God. And he is saying I'm the only one. But the Lord came to him and says, you are not the only one. Because I have reserved many more. And therefore this morning, the Lord wants you to start casting down. Because you have also created your own mountains. A mountain of imagination that is fuel because of what people are saying against you. Hallelujah. After you pull down, the Bible continues to say and every high thing that is exalted itself against the knowledge of God that there is many other things that are exalted against the knowledge of God that when God says I love you the word love is suppressed by the many things that are exalted in your life when the Lord says I have good plans for you that every other thing that comes your way suppresses that which the Lord is saying and so the Lord is saying that we have the power to cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And after you have pushed them down, you take them captive. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Which means that the many thoughts that are in you, the many things that you are thinking, you need to take them captive. And you know to take captive. I like this movie called uh, The War Room. Because the lady in that uh, uh, movie uh, comes out in a way that she speaks to her situation. And she prays and tells God, There is this fear that has made me. There are these things that have kept me away from fulfilling my destiny. And so it's like he collects all those many things by through prayers and in prayers 
maombi. And he put them in a room somewhere. Which means he's taking every thought captive. So that you can be able to operate in the environment that God wants you to operate in. For some time I have walked in fear. I have feared many things. You have feared to be sick. You have feared to fail. You have feared that it may not be well with you. But sometimes I remembered that I need to speak to every situation and I speak it against the, with the knowledge of the word of God and tell everything that it shall be well with me. So the Lord desire you to do that you may take captive everything that stands against you. The weapons that God has given you they are not carnal. They are not of the world. They are not weapons that you can um, uh, like arm yourself, maybe like the armies in Israel. Maybe if you're in Gaza today, you would see how armed the Israelite armies are armed. But the weapons that the Lord is giving you, they are not carnal, they are not worldly. Because they are mighty in the Lord. They have divine power. They can be of mass destruction. Because the Lord is on your side. Some years back during my employment. You know the more the higher you go the higher the challenges. And at one point I was maybe in the peak of my career. And there was a lot of pressure. And one day, when I was still seated in my office, someone came and told me that, do you know there are interviews that are going on? And they are to do with your department. And so I inquired, what is it about? And I was told someone is being sought to replace you. And I can tell you at that point, to fear clipped in. I wondered what next. How would such a company be so unfair to me? I have worked for them diligently. Just the previous year I have been one, I had been one of their best employees. How would they turn against me? But at that point I thought as a human being saying that now that I'm in charge of IT I will do everything possible to mess up with this interview and so I thought of what to do that I will send a, an email to the person that is being hired and tell him not to join that company I had a way to getting back into all the emails I could even log into to my boss's email. And so I have the means of messing up. But the more I thought of it, the Lord quietened me at some point. And he told me, why do you want to fight for yourself? Why do you want to stand for yourself? And when he said so, I said, Lord, here I am. Do with me. Cause me to know what is your will. And I took some days and prayed. And in the course of praying, God started showing me faith. And the first favor came from the MD of the company. Because he called me and asked me, what is this that is going on? And I told him, surely, I'm also not aware. I even saw by mistake an email before in my boss, uh, boss's email saying there is a new boss coming. And he told me, worry not. Worry not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's to say that the Lord started intervening. 
Because what I came to know is that the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but they are mighty in the Lord that the Lord wants you to involve him in the places and situations that you are challenged that there are mountain for sure the interviews were completed and when they were completed they picked someone and someone was just about to report but the day they wanted to report or they were expected to report the same name was taken to my MD and he was told we need to replace so and so and he asked what's the reason why are you replacing me? and the person of the creek of people that wanted me replaced they had in real no genuine reasons and therefore the MD says preserve I will look at it later. And so the person was not hired. And everybody that had risen against me, the boss asked, what do you do beside what he does? Hallelujah. And to cut the long story short, that in two years' time, everyone that had clicked or had organized or schemed against me, I was involved in their sucking. Because the weapons of our warfare, they are mighty in the Lord. They are not of flesh and blood. Because I remember that day when we were called in to be told of the new changes. Because there was a letter for their sucking. And the new MD needed to know whether we agreed with the content of that letter. The Lord is telling us that we have fought for ourselves for too long. We have not invited him into our fight. The mountain that stands before you, the Lord is able to bring it down. How much of the Lord are you involving him? For the Lord to do anything, the Lord cannot do without your involvement. You know, down here, the Lord promises that God cannot do anything. Though he is the owner of this earth, without your permission, sometimes he is limited. No matter what you do, if you don't bring the Lord into your situation, he cannot do. And he may ask how. Because the Lord wants to make you part and parcel. Because for every miracle that the Lord will bring you away, He wants you to give Him a name. He wants you to call Him Jehovah Nisi. He wants you to call Him Jehovah Rapha. Because you involved Him in your healing. And so He can carry you along the process. He can carry you along the process. You know, one thing that I have learned over the years for the Lord to open open the doors of blessing. He will always test us. And that's why he gives you a seed but after that he requests you to bring back. And therefore he says bring you into the storehouse of God. That in the house of God there will be bread. That there will be enough. And after you do that then he says I will rebuke the devourer. What is he saying? He is saying that if you do what I ask of you, then I will step into your situation so that you can know I'm the Lord that you can glorify me. Hallelujah. The Lord cannot move. He wants to make you to be that tool so that he can bring to pass. There are many weapons that the Lord can use. But I would want just to speak of one today. And one of them is called grace. Tell someone grace. 
Mwambie mtu neema. Grace sometimes we look at it as a it's most redefined. Neema wakati mwingi inatambulishwa kama it is that God's unmerited favor. Ya kwamba kibali cha Mungu kisicho kisicho stahilika. In something that God the goodness of God. Yaani ni uzuri wa Mungu. That God extends to us. Ama Mungu anatuletea. That God brings your way. Anakuletea so chanwa. that you can know he is a God that is all love. Ili kwamba ujue ni Mungu wa upendo. Because his love is unconditional. Sababu upendo wake hauna. And therefore you don't need to do anything. Na wewe utaistahili kufanya chochote. For him to love you. Ili akupende. And so if you look at grace. Ukiangalia neema. Every day you step out of your house. Kila siku unapotoka nyumbani mwako. God gives you grace for the day. Akupatia neema Mungu. Sometimes you can ask yourself Unauliza if I have given all that testimony What was my contribution Wewe uliuhusika vipi What made God to make it happen Kwa nini Mungu akaifanya iteleke I want to say it is not because of me the person Sio mimi mtu But it's because of God's grace Ni kwa sababu ya neema ya Mungu You may ask yourself why did God create me shorter than others Unaweza uliza Mungu aliniumba mfupi kwa nini Yet I wanted to be taller Na pengine ningelitaka kuwa mrefu But we can always summarize it and say it's because of God's grace that he extends different goodnesses if there is something like that because of his grace you may ask why has never God and never given me a car yet I have worked so hard yet there is someone else who has not worked as hard as I have yet they have a car why has God given me a house it is not because you are a good saver but because of God's grace that causes you to be in places that God can make things good for you. Hallelujah. This grace well it's extended to us by God as a gift first it comes to help us get to know God. But as we after we know God then grace changes because to the weak or to the sinners it is that grace that brings them to God that says you don't have to do anything you don't have to work to work, to do work you don't have to bring tithe so that you can be saved you don't have to bribe so that you can be born again so God gives grace and so we find ourselves in the house of God tell someone you need grace tell someone you need grace because it's that grace that first has qualified you to be what you are today but as after you come to the house of God if we look at the first thing that the Bible the, uh, whatever the grace does for us is that grace comes so that it can bring us salvation and so grace is God's or God's grace brings us salvation and if God has given us grace it says we have become children of God not by natural descent not by human decision or our husband's will but born of God so that grace just causes you to come when you repent and we find ourselves in the house of the Lord once that is done then things move from that point in time that that grace starts, starts to do what the, the, the next thing which means that grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness. That for God to operate in our lives, God comes into your life and gives you grace that when you walk in sin or through sin, sin is not your portion. That when every other person is doing what they are doing, God gives you grace that the mountain of sin is no longer a mountain before you. 
And so for the many of us that keep falling every day and rising, the Lord is providing grace for us that even where you lack strength, that when you don't know what to do in a circumstance, the grace of God, Second Timothy Titus 2.11 says, from verse 12 it says that the grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness and to worldly passions and to live self-controlled upright and godly lives in the present age. Meaning that it will not teach you to live the days past. That it's in this world that things are not okay. The present age when everything goes bad. That grace teaches you. This grace is extended to you for free. That you may stop doing sin or committing sin. Because the grace of God has been provided. If you think of that grace that God is giving us. Then it becomes like bodyguards watching over VVIPs. That every time you step into situations of sin, that this grace becomes like a bodyguard. And it shields you, and it causes your heart to awaken to be alert. That you are able to respond to God and say no. That when you think of your children being in a situation that you don't know what to do, when the grace of God is upon them, then when you have not taught them what to do, the grace of God tells them to say no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God is extending help. God is extending help that we may go through the tunnels of this life but come out on the other side and scathed by the fires and the flames of this life. The next thing that grace does is that grace helps us in our uh, in our hour of need. Grace helps us in our times of need. Hebrews 14 and verse uh, 4 and verse 14. It talks about the grace of God. And it tells us that we approach the throne of God. And it says that let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help uh, to help us in our time of need. If the grace of God will help us in our times of need, then the first thing the Bible is telling us is that we approach a throne and it's in that throne that there is grace. But when the Bible speaks of approaching, it means there are steps that each one of us needs to take. Because the throne will not come to us. It is not God who will come to us. It is us that we need to go to the throne of God. How do you approach the throne of God? It is possible you may have no strength. It is possible you may be weak. It is possible that you are limping. And it's possible that you are clawing. But to approach means you have to do everything possible. You know, I've been also thinking. And just thinking because I also am a believer and a Christian at the same time. Uh, that many a times, when I feel lowly, 
nikijihisi nikiwa chini when i feel like i can't pray nikijihisi siwezi omba many a times is because i have neglected something niko sababu wakati mwingi nimeweza kuacha so if i were to approach someone and tell them i'm feeling so low nikimfikia mtu nimwambie niko chini sana my prayer life my prayer life is not good maisha yangu ya maombi si njema if i had to inspect myself nikijitazama sometimes i realize it's because i have neglected something ninaona ni kwa sababu kuna kitu nimekosa i have not been consistent sijaweza kukuwa mtu wa kufuatilisha i have not followed up sijafuatilisha and therefore god is saying when he says we approach his throne to obtain help ya kwamba tunakuja mbele ya kiti cha neema yake kuweza kufikia msaada it is because we have to take the initiative ni kwa sababu lazima tuchukue nafasi where i approach the throne of grace ya kwamba mimi nitaweza kufikilia kiti chake cha enzi and it says when we do so na tukifanya hivyo then you obtain mercy tutaweza kupata neema when the mercy of god says every judgment that was over you na neema ya mungu inasema hukumu yote iliyo juu yako is cancelled imeweza kuwa all has been paid for imeweza kulipiwa you have been set free umewekwa huru and when you obtain that mercy na unapopata rehema ile together with it you obtain grace pamoja nayo unapata neema that grace that causes you to walk in god's goodness neema ambayo inafanya utembee katika uzuri wa mungu that even when you don't do not deserve because it's god's favor ya kwamba hata wakati haustahimili kwa sababu ni kibali cha mungu that someone who say Mtu atasema what can i do for you kutendeni what do you want here kwenye nini unatakani and as i give you many stories about myself na nikikwambia didi mingi kuhusu i remember i had also been sent somewhere to work nakumbuka nilikuwa nimetumwa mahali kazi and i have been sent there to go and train an executive nilikuwa nimetumwa kuweza kufunza mtu ambaye anasimamia and when i got to that office nilipoenda mahali pale the training never took place ile training ama mafunzo haikufanyika every time i would arrive in that office in the evening ningalienda mahali pale jioni He would invite me for a cup of tea. And would take tea. And after the at the end of the day towards 7 in the evening. We would not do any training. So after many days of just taking tea and chatting. He asked me. Would you want a job? And I asked, I said what job? He said instead of you coming here to train me why don't you join this company so that you can train me and train all the other staff and i said i wouldn't mind and the, he said tomorrow bring me your cv the same cv that i told you that had nothing much and when i came to the office that day he told me take it to the hr and in my walking to the hr hr's office he made a call and so by the time i got there he told me when do you want to start and i said when you say utasema lini Mungu. will chasha you into places that though you are warm though you cannot fight for yourself though you don't have what it takes when you approach the throne of grace the lord is saying that you will obtain mercy and grace to help you in time of need and for many years I became na nilikuwa a person of to work in that company nikawa nafanya kazi mahali pale a position was created nafasi ilitengezwa there was no position that i was to go into but there was a position created for me iliundwa kwa sababu yangu because of the grace of god kwa sababu ya neema ya this morning the grace of god asubuhi ya leo neema ya mungu it changes from just inviting us inabadilika kutoka kutuwa and it becomes an operational grace na inakuwa ya kutendeshwa kazi able to fight your battles because it's not just you it is god who comes in hallelujah hallelujah i'm excited that the grace of god does not require what you think you need 
hahitaji kile ambacho unadhania unahitaji the grace of god neema ya mungu is able to do it for us inaweza kututendea because it's god's goodness sababu ni uzuri wa mungu the next point jambo la lingine even as i come to finish is that the grace of god neema ya mungu seasons our speeches inatengeza maongezi yetu the grace of god Neema ya Mungu. Oh the prayer that Paul was making. Yaani maombi ambayo Paulo alikuwa anaomba. To the church of Colossians. Kwa kanisa ya Wakolosai. Is that our speeches ya kwamba maongezi yetu should be filled of grace. Maneno ya vinywa vyetu ikaweze kujazwa na neema. He says it should be always full of grace. Ya kwamba ikajae neema. In Colossians 4 verse 2. Wakolosai 4:2 and he uh, verse that verse to rather. Ah mbili in the last part of it which is chapter verse 6 uh, ya sita, he let, says let your conversations yakoba wacha maongezi yako be always full of grace yakoba ikaweze kuwa na neema seasoned with salt ikiwa imechachishwa na so chungi. that you may know how to answer everyone ikwamba ukaweze kujua kujibu kila kitu if you think of why would god need my conversation to be full of grace Ona, It's because the Lord has always invited us. To be quick hear us. But slow in speaking. Because many at times we have moved ourselves. From where the Lord would be fighting for us. Because our words are too sharp. They don't have grace. Instead of me making the situation to be good you antagonize people you make people not to feel like they need you you know we don't need to know who you are people don't need to be described of who you are because the bible tells us out of the abundance kutoka kwa wingi a man's heart ya moyo wa mtu a man speaketh And so the Bible also continues to prod us that a good well will always produce good water. Meaning even a bad well produces bad water. And so the Bible is like asking how do you change then that which is bad so that you can make it good so that people can start eating from you hallelujah the word of god if we are to move from where we are so that our speeches can be full of grace we have to work with the holy spirit so that the fruits of the holy spirit can be born in our lives so that every time we speak wakati wote tukinena people will start desiring watu wataanza kutamani how i wish jinsi gani ningatamani that so and so speaks mtu yule na yule anene that i can be made whole ya kwamba nikaweze kutengeza you know the songs that david sang wimbo daudi aliimba every time saul had a problem wakati mwingi saulu alikuwa na shida every time saul had the evil spirit come Saulo over him alikuwa amepandwa na roho mchafu the songs and the worship of david yani wimbo wa daudi caused the enemy to get out of him ilikuwa inafanya adui anatoka kwake there is an environment that we create through our speeches kuna hali ambazo tunatengeza and the bible says in uh, Psalms 1 that when we do not remain in the company of the wicked sitting in the seats of the scorners then we start becoming blessed because it's there that the lord commands a blessing it is there that the lord says everything that you do not how much you labor not how much you work it is not the hours that you spend at work that makes a difference You know the people that are blessed. By the way they don't work a lot. They don't work a lot. Sometimes they are at uh, when you are busy in the office. They are somewhere in Mudaiga praying golf. Because the Lord's blessing have come upon them. And they are better than us who labor for many hours how then do i change how do i become the blessed of the lord how 
How do I make the, the, the how do I become a tree? That is planted by the water side. That whatever I do, then it yields. That I will be able to bring fruits in season and out of season. I have to be changed. My pattern of thinking has to be changed. That I can be able to walk with God. Walking with God is grace. It's grace. It is the grace that ushers you in places that you cannot go. Hallelujah. As I finished, the last point, if not least, but not least. God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 8 or verse 9. It says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect. This is Paul and we know the story. He had prayed for a mountain that was before him. That that mountain would go. But as he prayed, he says three times I prayed that the Lord would take the thorn out of my flesh. But the more he prayed, the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. You know, as much as God wants to come into our situation, sometimes he wants to carry us. He wants first to cause us to know that he is there. I know there are times I have felt God to be very far away from me. And I have wondered why God have you left me. But what I have come to know even when he feels so far away that his grace has been so sufficient that I can see him in many other ways, things that I have not struggled to do, I find that his grace is carrying me. The grace of God is sufficient. Romans 5.20 says that even though sin increases, the more sin increases, the more the grace of God increases. That the Lord would want to be there for you. That even though things are changing, negatively against us the grace of God is sufficient that grace it is not just for a moment but the Bible tells us or I sing a song and say that grace will carry me home that grace is not just for a moment but all unto us because grace will not be perpetual grace has its own limit there is a day the Bible says John in the book of Revelation says that there will be a day people will tell Oh mountains fall on me because there will be pain and anguish people will try to repent and to come to Christ but the grace of God will have been taken away we have a moment to use grace we have a moment to walk in grace so that we can be that person that that moment will not get us that when that moment comes the Lord will have preserved us. We will be not among those that cry. So maybe you are asking, what do I do to obtain the grace? Grace of God is operational. The more we walk with God, it's just like that thing I had said, we are very rough sometimes. If you put a stone in water, Ukechukua running water, jiwe, rough, coarse, after many days, nyingi, that water tends to soften, the, to, to make the stone soft. The roughness is taken away and the stone becomes smooth such that some of us have taken such stones and kept them in our houses because they look beautiful it is not any man's work that softens that makes it soft or smooth it's the water that it remains in that makes it to be smooth when we remain in God 
God. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. And the work of grace to cause us to be smoothened. That we become the house, the dwelling place of God. That God can dwell there. That is what John, uh, in the book of John, the Bible tells us. That when we love Jesus, Jesus speaking, he says, I will tell my father. And me and my father will come and make our dwelling in you. Then when they do that, you will be able to stand and say, if God is for me, who can be against me? If there is any mountain ahead of you, if God is inside you, what can stand against you? God by his grace, when the grace of God indwells you, then nothing can stand against you. You can subdue. You can bring down because of the grace of God. You are a candidate. Tell someone, someone you are a candidate. You are a candidate of grace. You can attract grace. Grace is your portion. You may be there and you are wondering when will they give me an opportunity I want to make use of the grace of God you want to run fast here and say that grace before it is with the drone I want to be made whole of it you are there you are saying people have not known me people have not liked me but the grace of God can make you to be loved not first by men, but first by God. God is here. Grace breaks the chain. For Saul, Paul, and Cyrus, when they were in prison, when they did not know what to do, when the grace of God appeared, the chains got broken. The chains that you are carrying, the pains that you have, the mountain that stands before you, it can be broken by grace. Because when the Son of Man appears, then nothing can stand before you. The mountains have to be to bow. As I invite you to arise, I want to ask you to go before the Lord. There are the many things I have spoken, but out of them you may have just picked one. And you are telling the Lord, Lord, my grace, I claim my grace, I invite grace that it can work in me, it can make me to be the person that you want to you to be. Talk to the Lord. Take a moment. You may be struggling. You may be looking at your mountain. But that mountain, the Lord is well able. If he has preserved others, he preserved the Raja of old. When he had ran and he had no grace to continue, through a laven, God laven, our God sent meat to him. He surprised him so that he would be fed. When it was too hot, he did not know where to hide. God caused a tree to grow and he hid a raijah because he had away some distance to cover. You may have not been defended. You may have been walking in fear as mountains before you. The Lord is our defender. God can come through. Father, we ask this morning that every mountain that stands before your people, every power of darkness that hovers before God over your people, Father, by whatever name, we have said that there is no mountain that has no name. And therefore this afternoon we want to speak to every mountain mountain of finances mountain of luck mountain of want we want to speak to you commanding you to bow 
Not in our name. Not in our name. But in the name of the Lord. Because of the grace of God that has appeared to our man that says that they can be made whole. This morning we receive that grace to walk, to manifest, to live a life that has a difference. Father, I have shared so many testimonies of how you have worked in my life. Not because I have been so good. Not because I'm any special. But it's because you can work in people's life. How I pray this afternoon that by the same grace that you have used over many other, the many other testimonies in this house, that grace may be extended over your people's life that you can show yourself faithful to the glory of your name. Be glorified. Be exalted. Even as you receive honor. Even as you receive praise. For in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen.